Tekken 6 gave birth to many new characters, one of them was Lars Alexanderson. He is of Swedish descent and his actual age is unknown, but most believe he is on the younger side of the ages 49 to 21, which are Kazuya's and Jin's ages respectively. After the events of Tekken 5, Jin seizes control of the Mishima Zaibatsu, a massive multinational conglomerate founded by Jinpachi Mishima, Jin's great-grandfather. Jin declares war on the world and Kazuya, Jin's father, proceeds to take over G Corporation, which is a cutting-edge biotech firm. G Corp announces they will be fighting against the Zaibatsu, and doing so, are viewed as heroes. Lars's story begins in a military-style operation in what seems like a Mishima facility. From there, he discovers a lab with a sleeping female cyborg. The pod states Eliza Boskonovic. Reports indicates that she looks like the deceased daughter of Dr. Boskonovic, a Russian scientist who was kidnapped and forced to work for Kazuya Mishima. Shortly after, they are attacked by Jack robots sent by G-Corp. Lars defeats the robots, but when recovering from the encounter, one of the remaining Jack robots activates a self-destruct mechanism, blowing up the lab. Lars is the only survivor at the scene, and when he regains consciousness, he accidentally activates the pod, waking Elisa. We soon discover that Lars has suffered amnesia from the explosion, and once again are attacked by another Jack robot. Lars and Elisa dispose of it and quickly escape the building to a nearby forest. Elisa then notices Lars is wearing standard Tekken Force equipment. She scans the Mishima Zaibatsu's database to tell Lars all records of him existing have been deleted and a manhunt has been issued for him. The two carry on to meet and fight previous Tekken characters, eventually running into Li Li, a wealthy fighter from Munako, who gives him a car before leaving in order to help their efforts in defeating Jin Kazama. Moments later, Togo, a close friend of Lars and a lieutenant within the rebel army, find the two and remind Lars that he is the captain of the rebel army. He tries to return Lars's captain badge as he found it while searching the lab after the explosion. Lars refuses as he says he's not ready to be their leader yet. Togo then gives Lars a cell phone before he heads out to search for Heihachi Mishima, as he was planning to find him before he lost his memory. On the way, they encounter Wang Qinglei, an old Chinese martial arts master, a good friend of Jinpachi Mishima, teacher and distant relative of Ling Xiaoyu, who tells Lars to ask Heihachi about the epita he found in Central America, and also warns Lars about his suspicions of Elisa, saying she is dangerous. Safina, an archaeologist from Egypt, appears when the two leave, predicting to Wang that Lars will save the world. Lars eventually discovers Heihachi's secluded hideout in which he confronts him. After a battle, he recovers from his amnesia where we find out and he remembers that he is the illegitimate son of Heihachi, making him a half-brother to Kazuya Mishima and a half-uncle to Jin Kazama. This also means he, although being part of the Mishima bloodline, does not carry the devil gene as it is passed down by Kazumi Mishima, wife of Heihachi Mishima. Heihachi offers to join forces, but Lars refuses, knowing Heihachi doesn't rely on anyone else but himself. Then he continues to question him on the whereabouts of the Epita. Lars then pulls a gun on him, but Elisa stands in between them, protecting Heihachi, saying it isn't right for Lars to be pointing a gun towards his own father. Heihachi's secret service try to intervene, but are taken down. Lars then fires a bullet at Heihachi, which he then catches with his teeth. Moments later, Togo gives Lars a call to tell him the location of the Epita is underneath the Mishima Zaibatsu's headquarters. The duo then reach the city helping Lo Mo Long, a gifted Hong Kong police officer and a master of the five animal forms Chinese martial art, who gets caught in a sticky situation with G Corp, as he had leads on Kazuya planning something sinister in the shadows. After defeating the army and Elisa taking down a helicopter, they come into contact with Li Chao Lan, adopted from China by Heihachi Mishima and trained in Japan for the sole purpose of being Kazuya's rival. With Li's connections, he decides to help Lars and Elisa by providing intel from both G Corp and Mishima Zaibatsu, not knowing how direct his connection is with the Mishima family. Shortly after, Li receives a call from Julia Chang, an archaeologist working at G Corp that is a friend of Li's, who gets trapped at a G Corp facility. Lars and Elisa head out and successfully save her. Next, they find themselves at G Corp where they get ambushed by a group of soldiers led by Anna Williams an assassin from Ireland, younger sister of Nina Williams. 
Togo then arrives with his troops allowing Lars and Elisa to catch up and defeat Anna and Kazuya. Unfortunately, Togo is found severely injured and dies when they make it back. Lars swears to avenge him and they venture forward to the Zaibatsu train taking them to the Mishima Central Tower. Along the way, they get ambushed by Nina Williams attempting to protect Jin. Lars and Elisa defeat her and kick her off the train. Soon after they are ambushed again by a large robot which Raven, an international intelligence agent, intervenes allowing Lars and Elisa to reach the tower. After a confrontation with Jin, we find out that Elisa was built to serve him as he disables her safe mode, reboots her and sends her to attack Lars. Jin had known about Lars's every move through Elisa and now he is forced to fight his dear friend. After defeating Elisa, she escapes through the glass ceiling of the tower. Raven then appears informing Lars he had been following him since the journey began and offered his assistance in which Lars accepts. Lars and Raven set out to the desert where they find a temple. There lies a demon named Azazel, also known as the Rectifier. A conflict emerges as Lars and Raven find Kazia within the temple. After the fight, Kazia realizes that Lars has Mishima blood in him. Lars reveals that they are half-brothers, which Kazuya responds in disapproval and leaves with Anna. They eventually find Azazel and soon after defeating the demon, it says humanity's destiny was to be destroyed. Azazel begins to self-destruct with its last words, the punishment for your sins will now begin. Lars and Raven make a run for it, but Jin is waiting for them outside the temple. Elisa then shows up again to defend Jin in which Lars defeats her and doing so causes Elisa to turn back to her usual self. Explaining that she had no other choice but to serve Jin, Elisa expresses that she enjoyed traveling with Lars and wishes it was longer because Lars was the only person who treated her like a human. She then shuts down completely. Jin insults her, which angers Lars, causing a battle. After the dust clears, Jin reveals the real reason why he engulfed the world in war is because the only way that Azazel would awaken is if the world was filled with negative emotion. Lars tells Jin that he's already defeated Azazel, in which Jin responds he is not dead and can only be killed by someone who carries the devil gene. Jin believes that killing Azazel will free him of the devil curse. Azazel then erupts from the rubble even stronger. Jin rushes to engage Azazel and uses forward forward 2 to punch Azazel in the chest as they both fall down to the bottom of the collapsing temple. Lars and Raven take Elisa's body to Lee in which he promises to repair her. Raven returns Lars's captain badge which Tolgor gave to him before he died. Shortly after, Lars gets a call of a new mission and drives off. The next time we see Lars is in Tekken 7, where he finds Jin had survived and is wandering around the Middle East trying to escape United Nations soldiers. Lars takes Jin after defeating the soldiers and drives off to a Violet Systems facility, Lee's company. There he is happily reunited with Eliza Boskonovich, who has been successfully repaired by Lee. Shortly after their reunion, they are attacked by Tekken Force soldiers in an attempt to recapture Jin. Lars, Lee, and Elisa fend off the soldiers successfully until Nina shows up blasting Elisa out of the building. Nina calls in a helicopter taking Jin. Fortunately, Lee hijacks the helicopter and blows up the facility as Lars and Elisa escape. Afterwards, Lars meets the journalist who is trying to expose the Mishima Zaibatsu. He tells the journalist that the sole purpose of his birth was to prove that Heihachi did not possess the devil gene. Shortly after, the journalist discovers that Lars had found Jin alive. The journalist gets the urge to kill Jin in his sleep, but is stopped by Lars, saying he would kill Jin himself, but he is the key in ending the war. From here, Lars's role takes a back seat as he stays in Violet Systems to watch the rest of the events of Tekken 7 unfold. Overall, I think Lars is a likable character. He's heroic, a good sense of justice. I found his Relationship with the Lisa is a little odd. I mean, like, what, what, what is that? It does imply that in Lisa's journal entries that some parts of her may be human, but that's just me reading off the fan wiki page, so I, I don't even know if that's true. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I always appreciate your support. New videos coming out every week. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.